how rock music became white music. You often hear people say that, or you often hear black American people say that uh, rock music, or rather rock and roll, was stolen from blacks by whites. But they're actually wrong in a couple of ways. Stolen from blacks uh, by number one, whites. When you're speaking but of they're actually wrong rock and roll music being ways. stolen uh, uh, by uh, stolen from blacks by whites, um, what the music they're actually referring to is not rock and roll, but rather um, rock music. Okay, um, rock and roll and rock music is not the same damn thing. Only people who are ignorant about the history of rock music and rock and roll music and just American music in general confuse the two. But rock and roll music, of course, derives from uh, other forms of American music, including blues, uh, rhythm and blues, swing and country, formerly known as country and western. And before that, it was known as hillbilly music. Okay. But all these uh, different genres of music I just listed that rock and roll derives from, of course, they come from uh, both blacks and whites. But a lot of people don't know that um, Tin Pan Alley music or Tin Pan Alley pop, which is a um, white form of music, influenced rhythm and blues. Rhythm and blues style of singing is basically equal to uh, Tin Pan Alley music, a white form of music, and gospel singing, which is traditionally a black uh, form of music or a black style of singing. So rhythm and blues is not um, a strictly, it doesn't strictly derive from black culture, but uh, it was established and founded by um, blacks. But it had uh, white influence as well. And you can say that pretty much with any form of music that developed in America, it always had black and white influence, um, which is something you got to keep in mind when you're talking about music, American music or American culture, period. Part of the reason they incorporated, blacks incorporated white music, of course, is because whites, they would have always have historically been the main consumers of music. And so blacks never initially made music to appeal to black people. They made music to appeal to white people. Because white people, to this day, and even back then, dictated what was uh, acceptable, what was uh, mainstream. Rock and roll initially also was, wasn't was even a genre of music. It was initially used to refer to all these different types of music. Initially, rock and roll, which is the term used to refer to blues, rhythm and blues, country, and swing. And eventually, it developed its own um, identity. You know, it developed as a, a separate genre of music. Uh, but... Rock and roll essentially is based mostly on swing music, um, black swing music. <clears throat> if you listen to the um, instrumentation of rock and roll, mostly whether it be from Elvis or from Lil Richard or whoever, it's real up tempo like swing and instrumentation is, is basically swing music. Who made uh, the culture associated with uh, rock music? <clears throat> well, let's first you got to examine the culture itself. The culture of um, rock music uh, was rebellious. Um, it was anti-establishment and anti-mainstream, and it coincided with uh, the hippie movement. So basically, the hippie movement um, was the foundation for, or the blueprint for uh, what is uh, rock culture. Rock culture is essentially, at least initially, was hippie culture, pretty much. Um, and all the things you associate with the hippie culture, drugs, uh, again, anti-establishment, anti-mainstream, uh, you know, ripped jeans, bright colors, dashikis, all these weird dressings and all this stuff, hippie slang, all of that um, was influenced by both blacks and whites. Both blacks and whites participated in that um, and helped to make that culture. Uh, hippie slang, with uh, words such as groovy and far out, that mostly derives from black slang. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, the culture itself was basically co-founded by blacks and whites pretty much equally. Um, rock culture can never be said to be a white or a black thing, only an American thing. So who made the sound then? As far as um, the way the singers sing and as far as the style of playing the guitar, who made the sound? As far as the way singers in uh, rock music sing, you can trace that back to um, black music. Um, the blues, uh, also country music. Um, but mostly 
um, the blues pretty much early on and um, as far as a pioneer of rock and roll itself, Chuck Berry style. Chuck Berry style set the blueprint for um, rock rock and roll, which set the blueprint for the way singers sing in, um, in rock music. Um, his guitar playing, the speed at which he played the guitar, also that set the foundation for um, uh, rock and roll. Uh, but as far as um, the style of uh, rock music evolved and became what it is today, the person who uh, you would give the most blame to uh, as far as the style of play and uh, just the singing would be Jimi Hendrix, who, of course, was influenced by various black artists that came before him. But Jimi Hendrix basically set um, the mold and blueprint for what the way of singing uh, came to be a, be known as in rock music and also um, the way the style of playing, he basically pushed the limits. He made it basically made it clear there wasn't no limits as far as what you could do in rock music. So Whites established rock as a group thing as far as the sound goes in playing. Um, again, uh, rock uh, initially, well, rock and roll was um, initially about um, an individual uh, artist such as Elvis or Lil Richard. But um, in time, it became more about the group with uh, rock music itself. Also, as far as the sound, um, the sound that was associated uh, with rock and roll pretty much was perpetuated and continued by white um, artists and white groups such as the Beatles and the Beach Boys, who um, their style, I would mostly say, was um, I wouldn't classify it as rock music, but rock and roll. The only person to really push rock music into to a different sound from um Rock and roll is something that was distinct. Again, it started with uh, Jimi Hendrix. <clears throat> Not saying he was the only one, but he was the main one, and he did it in a way that was that really separated rock music from rock and roll. The performance style of rock music is known as something that's, you know, energetic, aggressive, and it has a lot of uh, sexual bravado, or whatever. It's really uh, known for that kind of stuff. That all derives straight from black culture, from people like again, Lil Richard. He was really known for his stage performances, his wild stage performances, um, which uh, caught a lot of people's attention. Um, and that greatly influenced rock music, uh, greatly influenced artists, I'm sure, like uh, Jimi Hendrix, who took it to a whole nother level as far as performance style goes. But uh, some people say, what about Elvis Presley? Um, my reply to that is anybody who knows Elvis Presley, anything about Elvis Presley knows that his style of performance um, it came directly from um, black artists, whether it be famous black artists or unknown black artists that he uh, that he uh, researched and watched at uh, clubs or whatever. He would just go around studying them. So that all um, the performance style of rock music all derives from rock and roll and uh, black rock and roll artists. Also, when you're trying to um, decide for yourself whether or not um, rock music is a white thing or a black thing. You have to first ask yourself, uh, what makes a genre white or black? Well, there's certain criteria that um, a genre of music has to live up to in order to be established as black or white. There's five things, five basic things that um, I've written down. Uh, first, um, the genre of music has to be embraced equally by, um, by blacks and white teens, or even more so by blacks in order to be a black thing. Um, it has to have equal representation by blacks or more representation by black artists. Um, it has to be easily traceable. The roots have to be easily traceable to black culture and it has to be expanded or modified on and perpetuated by um, black Americans. And in the case of black Americans, um, it has to be danceable or either have a real soulful singer. Traditionally, historically, if you look at the music that appeals to black people, it's usually the danceable or soulful, have a soulful singer. And also that's the case with American music. Most popular American music is danceable. Rock music itself doesn't, um, it fails to meet any of this criteria. Um, for in, for example, um, it wasn't, nev it was never um, embraced equally by blacks. It was always embraced more by um, white teenagers who saw this as the ultimate form of rebellious music. And that's the thing that always appealed to White teenagers who were always historically have been the main consumers of popular music, they saw rock as the newest form of rebellious music. 
uh, and it appealed to them more for that reason and for no other reason. As far as equal or more representation by black artists, it was it was really no uh, representation of black artists in rock music. Um, not in the mainstream anyways, besides Jimi Hendrix. He was the biggest, uh, arguably the biggest rock uh, music artist. Um, but besides him, it was, it was really no black artists to speak of. And also, it wasn't easily traceable as far as the roots. It's not really easily traceable because rock music derives from so many different genres of music, most of which are black, but some are white. Um, as far as expanding and modifying on the music and perpetuating it, uh, it never was uh, perpetuated or expanded on or changed in any way, really, by blacks uh, once Jimi Hendrix died. Nobody stepped up to basically be the next Jimi Hendrix. No black kids wanted to do that, but it was plenty of white kids, whether from America or from Europe, who um, who came after um, Jimi Hendrix, who were greatly influenced by him. And you could say Jimi Hendrix um, basically birthed a lot of uh, white rock stars that came after him. Um, either he influenced them directly or he influenced the groups that influenced them. Um, plenty of groups came after Jimi Hendrix, such as... Uh, for example, in Europe, it was a group called the Sex Pistols. This other group, I think in the U.S., called the Paper Dolls or some shit. But it was plenty of groups that were birthed after Jimi Hendrix, but they all were white. It was no black um, kids who basically inherited rock music. The white kids inherited um, rock music. And so that's what happened. That was the that was really the thing that really led to um, rock music ultimately becoming a white thing. It wasn't no black people to perpetuate it. I mean, even rock and roll wasn't perpetuated by blacks, but by whites like um, the Beach Boys. Um, Brian Wilson, who was the um, main songwriter and a member of the Beach Boys, his uh, one of his idols and his biggest influence was a black man, Chuck Berry. So, which it should have been the case that it was a black kid who studied people like Chuck Berry and Jimi Hendrix and who became a rock and roll star that followed in their footsteps. But it wasn't. It was only uh, white kids mostly. So in closing, what black Americans did do to um, make rock and roll um, part of black culture was they helped uh, establish the culture and they um, pl were uh, instrumental in the sound. They were uh, the main influence on the sound and uh, the performance style um, but what they didn't do was they didn't embrace it mostly. And and most importantly, blacks didn't uh, perpetuate it from generation to generation. It was no kids really wanting to be the next Jimi Hendrix or whatever. Um, so it became a white thing more and more. And um, also what white teens did was they made it what they wanted it to be. Uh, no blacks had a vision for what they wanted rock music to be or wanted it to sound like. Uh, but the white teens who came after Jimi Hendrix uh, in the late 60s and 70s, they had a clear vision of what they wanted rock to mean to them, to their culture, etc. And they basically made rock music into what they wanted it to be. Um, and so that's what happened. So basically, to answer the question, did white steal rock music from black Americans? Uh, the answer to that is no. Blacks pretty much gave it away. Black people basically left the field wide open for whites to inherit the music. But it wasn't stolen.